working on this computer. Yeah. Yon. So, uh, NCAA season 95 can be uh, treated as an end of an era, so to speak, because uh, the NCAA board, the um, uh, competition committee or so, has finally uh, decided that foreign athletes will not be able to play anymore come NCAA season 96. So, even though they still are eligible to play, um, they are not allowed to do so anymore. So, this has created much debate in the sports world as we know it. Uh, people taking sides, whether this is for good or this is for bad. So now we reconvene in our weekly gathering of these uh, brilliant people for another episode of Who the Heck Are We? Lance Fernandez hosting for this uh, this week. And uh, joining us is, of course, uh, Claudia Perrine. And of course, Claro Manzano and Jay De La Cruz, who is sipping what Cheers. he ate as Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. We'll, we'll leave it at it uh, as is. Tomato juice daw po yung iniinom ni Jay. Ang pasarap ng niya. This is going to be a nice talk. Parang sa last dance, diba? Ano ang iniinom ni Michael Jordan? Oh, diba? You know, you know, um, there's, there's a psychology pa daw behind how much uh, alcohol is in the glass. As connected to what Michael Jordan was saying. So parang they're relating... Uh, is Michael Jordan in the right mindset while speaking? Or mm. uh, maybe he has drunk too much uh, uh, alcoholic beverage or So, yeah, so yeah, but, malalaman yeah. natin mamaya kung... So, we will, uh, yeah, we'll see if uh, Jay will be coherent for the entire uh, next hour or so. Uh, uh, we'll wait for his statements and we'll just laugh if um, he commits some mistakes, siguro. But uh, before anything else, of course, we would like to greet our brother. Claro Manzano, a very happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, so, uh, anybody would like to thank uh, for your, uh, let's say, 35th birthday already? I know you're not 35? <laughs> I know you're not, no, no. I know you're not 35, but at least my birthday greeting will not expire in like, you know, 10 years. So. 10 years, correct. That's oh, the correct see? tally. So at least... <laughs> Until you get 35, our birthday greeting is still valid. It doesn't have expiration. Valid. Okay. <laughs> anybody, who, anybody you would like to thank, Claro? Oh, uh, salat. I want to thank you, know, you guys also, everyone else, Sir Noel, people in the UBS <laughs> broadcasting family, of course. Shout out to my day one homies. Uh, ang parkada namin, uh, guys. Just so you know, June Mars Coffee. Yeah, because we just got the name June Mars because we have a tall friend. And he was my <laughs> basketball teammate back in the day. Coffee, wala lang. We just said, let's put up a coffee shop in the future. So, that's the name. <laughs> mm. Shout out to those guys. Day one homies. Yep. Alright. Shout out to the name. our coffee gang. Okay. Mm. So, uh, let's yep. get the ball rolling with our main topic for the evening about uh, banning right. foreign athletes in uh, collegiate competitions. Are you for it? Are you against it? But, uh, Let's try to recall the short history of foreign athletes. It has happened before, like even in the 70s and in the 80s. There are a lot of, or there are some of foreign athletes who have uh, applied their craft here in the Philippines already. But mm -hmm. it has become sort of a norm or uh, a regular thing, I guess, when Sam Ekwe suited up for San Beda, uh, I guess, 15 years ago, so, sort of. And then uh, it just Pretty became much. a. It just became an influx after that, that yeah. um, every team, be it UAAP or NCAA, there will always be that staple um, foreign athlete who usually mans the five spot, the center. And it has trickled already into volleyball also with the NU, with Muchima. Um, they got <laughs> her from Africa and she's now playing for the Lady Bulldogs. So, mm -hmm. well, apparently the NCAA saw it as a, a problem. That's why they had to ban it. But I would like to get your thoughts, the three of you, because I know that you have a lot to say about this topic. <laughs> so, let's let's uh, start with uh, Birthday Boy, Claro. What's your take on this matter? Well, for me, honestly, I'm pro FSA because you see that it's a custom. No, well, it's not a custom. It's really. It's really a regular thing when you go out to the international level, whether you're playing a club team or a national team, you see that they are backed by these foreign players. They're allowed to get naturalized players. So that's pretty much how it works in the collegiate level. Because for me, even in the collegiate level and things you do, 
you have to follow how they do things internationally because if you don't keep up with the trends of the international game whatever sport volleyball basketball football even baseball if you don't keep up with them at the international level when it's time for the national team to play you'll see my kulang my mga botas that will we won't be as competitive so that's it for me pretty much because by bringing in foreign talent whatever level it may be collegiate professional these are people who are bringing in skills where they learned it from a different place and of course the only way to get better is if you play against players of course who are better than you they get you to raise your game yeah okay how about you claudia what's your take on this me i'm for it i'm for uh, phil foreign I feel for a uh, feel for a student athletes. Uh, number one, what like what Clara said, it brings up the game, the level of the game. You know? And if the student comes here to go to school and they just want to play basketball, why are we stopping, or <clears throat> whether it be football, volleyball, why are we stopping them from playing? So what's the reason? Is it because you know, of all the reasons that we hear? Are they being paid? Are they giving it a big advantage or being recruited illegally? But for me, it, that's the regulations. Eh? That's the that's the league's uh, responsibility to put the regulations in place to have that you know that correct rules. No, but I'm really for the uh, for Phil for him to play. And in fact, local players. If I was still playing, I would love a challenge. Right? Hey, you're saying that person's good, that player is good. I'll challenge myself. So it brings up the level of the game. Also. Just because we're saying we're asking Phil uh, an FSA to play means na magaling siya kaagad. It doesn't mean that. It means that diba, we can't put that in the minds of people saying just because FSA siya, automatically magaling siya. Hindi. Diba? So we should also be equally, uh, how do you call it? Equal. We can't equal be racist. Equal opportunities? Or, yeah. yeah, equal opportunity. Tama. We can't, we can't, uh, be selfish or self-centered saying ah, we, we don't need them we, in fact we need them <laughs> mm. we need we need co- even foreign coaches but that's a, that's a different topic <laughs> but yeah. I am so for zero. <laughs> we're two zero right now yeah. against the ban we are pro <laughs> FSA foreign yeah. student athlete right mm-hmm. yeah. cool Okay, so that's uh, two up for uh, <laughs> allowing foreign athletes to play how about you uh, Sir J what's your take on this <laughs> <laughs> ayaw, ayaw kong maging, I don't want to be the one in that two and whatever score mm-hmm. it may be. Makasubi. Actually, <laughs> actually, I'm actually, I'm all for the foreign student athletes. Mm-hmm. Toto yung sinabi ni Claro, toto yung sinabi ni Claudia. They can bring so much to the table when it comes to the game. However, yeah. we have to look on kung bakit ba tumututol itong mga taong against it sa pagpapalaro sa mga foreign student athletes. We have to look into what they are against, kung ano ba yung mga tinututulan nila, and how are we going to resolve it moving forward? Because we got to admit, we need this somehow, these foreign student athletes, to bring a different dimension in the game itself. Mm. Diba? However, when it's time to go beyond the game, doon nagkakaroon ng masasabi nating uh, problema eh. Ano which is, Oh, which is yung actually yung what that's what I see <laughs> when it comes to dun yung nakikita on point kung bakit itong mga officials, mga sports officials na tutol sa FSA. Uh, yun yung ano nila eh. Yun yung parang inihaharap nilang uh, point na ay di pwede yan. Pagbawal natin ng FSA, iba natin yan. Because of this, because of that, because of these reasons that doesn't have to do with the game. Pero if we'll just look at the game itself, oh, it can bring a lot of the, it can bring a lot of the table. Eh. Mm-hmm. Agree. Oh, my take. Uh, <laughs> 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 Pressure. <laughs> I would like to, uh, I would like to, I would like to, I would like to say that uh, it's good that we ban kunwari daw para may ibang ano, contract. <laughs> um, actually, um, I agree with the three of you that foreign student uh, athletes bring another dimension to the game. And it brings a different mentality to 
uh, the local players. Because let's face it, um, we've seen in the past twice Letran winning a championship without a foreign student athlete, but they went up mm-hmm. against one, and it motivated them to play at their A game, and they won. Yes. The so yeah. something, yeah, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that was very you... painful for me, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Must I say? Bed, bedista ka pala. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. May, to, may hidden information yan eh. May hidden information yan. Pwede mo oh, mapansin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Off the air. Hindi, yung isang kinaanap mo. Mukhang, mukhang, ibang, mukhang isang episode pa ulit yung dahilan na yan. Oh, yeah, no. It's like a separate, completely it, so. separate episode. It's oh, that yes. big of a thing. Why is but Claudia heartbroken? But speaking of Ketran, <laughs> Speaking of Letran playing against Beda and Letran had no foreign student athlete, again, I agree with you. That's what got them to want to play better. Because at the end of the day, again, if you play against someone who brings in a different level of talent, that will force you to get better. So, of course, that not only motivated Letran to work, but that also um, got their mind thinking, exploring creative ways on how to do this. They were pushing not only themselves in terms of how they read the game at mm. saka yung discarte and how can maybe in that situation coach Alden Ayo work around his system and come up with all of these tactics to be able to come up with that win so you know it really tests your creativity I could say mm-hmm. mm. kaya, nga, kaya that the question uh, we need to ask here is parang we need to evaluate the things that uh, these guys who are against uh, FSA is playing here, ano ba yung ano nila? Ano ba yung perspective nila? Bakit ba ayaw nila? Mm-hmm. And yes. somehow, that's the thing that we need to try to examine. Eh. No, just, uh, no. Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, funny you mentioned that, Jay, because I was mm-hmm. able to dig an article written by our very good friend, Chris King de la Cruz, mm-hmm. or Tiebreaker. Nice. So he was able Bye. to interview uh, Father Vic Calvo, of uh, Season 96 Management Committee. So he's from Letran. And mm-hmm. he had uh, 10 reasons, so to speak, why uh, the NCAA banned imports. Mm-hmm. Say say so, natin. Say say natin. Oh, sure. Well, <laughs> parang 10 commandments. So first, mm. thou, thou shall not play in the PBA. Like, imports <laughs> not play in the Philippines. Imports cannot oh, play in the Philippine Basketball Association nor for the national team. Okay? Second, and uh, I guess this is where the conversation will uh, get a little bit of steam. Mm-hmm. One slot for scholarships will be taken by these quote-unquote imports, which could mm-hmm. be allotted to a local player. Number okay, three, go ahead. Mm-hmm. he debunked the opinion that these imports, who are mostly big men, help in developing local big men. Take the case of San Sebastian producing Ian Sangalang and Letran had Raymond Almazan. Both are now steady contributors for their mother teams in the PBA and the national team. And this one, number four, another uh, adding more controversy. These quote-unquote imports are allegedly for hire. They usually employ agents, which is contrary to their amateur status. Fifth, according to him, it is common knowledge that to maintain these imports, schools must shell out skyrocketing allowances. The fourth and fifth reasons give substantial justification for his sixth reason, which is the aforementioned practices are against the very concept of amateur competition. So, let's focus on the first five first. Yung oh. una, thou shall not play in the PBA, given yan. Uh, oh. Roger, go ahead. Yeah, for me, is what does the PBA have to do with it? <laughs> well, the PBA apparently gets everybody, even Thirdy Ravenna, who hasn't signified for the PBA draft. So yeah, but yeah. the the PBA imports they come from, you know, from overseas. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. what what but, does the PBA have to do with but, the NCAA? But, oh, but come to think of it, then, uh, Claudia, huh. uh, don't you think the PBA, the PBA or other leagues above the collegiate uh, ranks hmm. are going there because? You have to remember, Ange Kwame is up for naturalization. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. It's possible. So, mm. so that's Ange a good... Kwame is going beyond oh. the collegiate ranks, diba? So, parang, for lack of a better term, merong one counterpoint na yung first, uh, 
yung yeah, number first one point. Point oh. ni, first point ni uh, Father Vic yeah Pati naman because si Embala, I mean, Embala was UAAP. He was also yes. mm-hmm. oh. looked as natural. Yep. Diba? Mm. I guess I, I get where you're going that um if eventually Ange Kami will be able to break through to the PBA, it will set a precedent that mm. uh, yeah. somebody else will follow. Not just one mm. person. but And there could be a danger, possibly, that you could have a PBA team that has like two or three foreign players already naturalized. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, ah, ayun. If, Going oh. Pero may rule na, 'di ba? May rule na yung PBA, 'di ba? They're only limited to 5 till 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 yeah. Till foreign, yeah. Phil Phil foreign. Phil foreign. yeah. Oh. Oh. Pero pero going on that one, yung sa point ni Lance. Pwedeng maging paraan niya ng halimbawa, sabihin yes. natin ng mga team sa PBA na Oy, may magaling na FSA dito. Pwede nating gawing important. Sige, diyan ka muna magpagaling ka dyan, magpalakas ka dyan. O pwede kang mag-national team, pwede kang sumali sa ibang liga. Pero eventually, kukunin ka namin. Maglalaro ka para sa amin. So, going back dun sa isang sinabi ni Father Vic dun sa allegedly na skyrocketing allow, may nabibigyan ng skyrocketing uh, allowance, mm-hmm. he might, I'm not saying that this is happening, pero he might be thinking on that perspective ba ganun yung mangyari pwede si well, sige yes. oh pwedeng yes. mangyari mm-hmm. na may ibang mag may ibang magpa-fund para dun sa FSA na yon na merong future purpose para dun sa FSA na yon hindi ko sinasabing totoo to pero it is it is a possibility mm-hmm. Sabi natin yeah. sige. Yeah. I'll, I'll make I'll use myself I'll use myself as, as an example. Sabi natin ako yung pang 13th team sa PBA na pumasok para may kumpara. Mm-hmm. Sige, nagtayo ako ng PBA team. Gusto ko muna ng import na gagamitin ko import every time na may import need in conference sa PBA. Sa lang kukunin ko import. So ngayon pa lang i-develop ko na siya. Paano ko siya i-develop? Ah sige, diyan ka sa eskwela na yan. Maglaro ka diyan. Ako bahala sa iyo. Farm team. Tayo. Mhm. Yep. That could happen. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, connected yung points 1 doon and yung point 4 or 5 doon na sinabi that goes against the foreign student athletes. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, maybe so, it's... Imagination the, ko eh. Well, maybe it's the emperor talking already. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> ano, juice, juice yan, ah. Sorry, 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 ah. That's what I'm about. Oh. Well, in terms of um, if we are up for long-term development, that could be a strategy. Mm-mm. That uh, you try to put him in a quote-unquote farm team and then let him develop Mm. And then let him prosper until he reaches the, the PBA. Mm. But the thing is, well, he's still up for bidding. Pwedeng mana, pwedeng manakaw ng iba. Well, we're talking about skyrocketing rocketing allowances. Yes. Let's face it. We'll not will not deny that there might be situations like this happening mm. in uh, the game. Yes, of course, in college ball it's recruitment, walang draft. So of course, yes. there you get the chance yes. to talk uh, to whoever you want to get. Yes. And you see not just in the Philippines but also in other countries, let's say the states, um Maybe money isn't really a factor there for recruitment given the rules that they have. But what they have there is maybe the prestige of the school, the benefits they could provide for them, you know, because the guys are coming. Mm-hmm. But that's yes, changing the network also. Also, uh, it's also changing. Claro. The NCAA, yes, the yeah. scope of recruitment, everything the NCAA, yeah. like the players now can get paid for their name and their, yeah. their likeness. But that's a different, right? yeah, that's yeah. A different. I don't know. Definitely, it's a different thing also. But yeah, I want to chime yeah. in with the, the first two points maybe but medyo deep na rin to it's like a, someone who fell into into the cracks Kirk Long yep. he played mm. college ball Yon, he played oh. high school ball here mm. he could not play in the PBA they were thinking mm-hmm. of making some exception for him you played high school ball in the Philippines you were developed here check mm. and yeah. then you played college mm. here he exhausted his NCAA uh, UAAP eligibility not just in basketball like baseball didn't show. Baseball. Yeah, so, yeah. In a situation like that, they were they said they were thinking about giving him an exception 
but I think he deserved an exception in that situation because halos Pinoy na siya eh. like, I know people who know him and he's he like the way Tagalog. he jokes yeah th- and also his humor the way he jokes around with people mm-hmm. yeah he's in, he's really part of the culture already so in that situation um that he, he should be able to play in the PBA but you see the commitment the number of years let's not yes. forget yeah. yes but speaking of these imports because they cannot play PBA okay these guys are foreigners perhaps they can look for, they can look to other leagues to play to play in also we've seen guys like Ben Mbala he started mm. playing in Mexico and then now he's working his way up in France so mm. of course it's survival of the fittest not all high school athletes get to play college regardless of sport not all college athletes get to play in the pro, in the pro ranks. Pros, yeah. mm. Again, any sport. So it's the survival of the fittest. So if these imports for foreign student athletes are in the collegiate level, of course, that's something that could perhaps motivate them to say, hey, I want to go pro. Because you have so many options already, yes. given the growth of the game in the region. Yeah. My ABL palang. And, and then we saw that there's Taiwan, there's Taiwan also already. But wouldn't but, but piggy, piggybacking naman with Claro, for me again the PB has nothing to do with it, right? The the the, 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 the Phil Foreign player could go Taiwan, Japan, uh, yes. France, wherever. But wouldn't wouldn't the league want to have that person? Parang be proud. Hey, he played in in our you know in our league. He developed in our league. He developed his skills in our league. Isn't that a, a proud? Moment or a proud thing, de ba, for for a school or even for a league to say, hey, our player that you know, like, let's say Embala gets into the French turn out uh, the team, de ba? Hey, he played but, in he played in La Salle. Uh, Wouldn't that be, but, mm-hmm. you know, he he went like he, you know the P, the reason why the PBA the reason why they can't go into the to the PBA is because of the rules of the PBA or mm-hmm. whatever, yeah. Yes. De ba? So that's the restriction. And oh. that's not the fault of the UAP or NCAA. That's that's the PBA's restriction, right? Hmm. But, but it, most... yeah. go ahead. See, but wouldn't it be so such a glowing record for the league to have a FSA playing in your league, that's playing in, in an overseas country? But the, yeah. the most the most the PBA can accommodate these uh, FSAs in reg- with regards to what eh, is the next level of FSAs eh, after they finish college. The most PBA can offer is a slot as an import, diba? That's yes. the most can do. And yes, unless they about, get naturalized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And talking about Ben Embala, Ben Embala almost played for Magnolia. Diba? Yes, he did. Yep. When yeah. Robin Travis was hurt. Yeah. Oh, he almost played for Magnolia. But going back to what we talked about no first episode, talking about Asian imports, again, meron, tayong, meron na set na standard sa mga imports, eh, diba? Okay. Mm-hmm. Do we cons- now the consideration would be is are those currently foreign student athletes could they pag that pag umapak pa sila sa PBA would they be that kind of player dun sa team na mapupunta nila that kind of import that a P- that a PBA team search for mm-hmm. diba that would be the next question eh yeah yun din oh. also oh yeah Jay's a point because uh well, let's face it. UAAP and NCAA competition is still different from the PBA. Uh, yes. PBA is uh, yeah. another level. Uh, mm-hmm. Regardless of what you say, um, mm-hmm. you can you, know, you can always speculate that this mm-hmm. team, this collegiate team, can defeat Colombian or like Blackwater. No, it doesn't happen like that because you're in the it's pros for the level, reason. Yeah. Eh. You're mm-hmm. a different level of thoroughbred. Eh. You're a higher level of talent. Mm-hmm. You, it's no, it's, it's by different. no accident that you make it there. It's not, it's not just talent alone. You're really oh. different. You're unique. Eh. So, mm-hmm. of banning the foreign student athletes to play in the PBA, well, let's give them a chance if they really deserve it. If they really that good, yes. mm-hmm. well, give them, give them a, a, a another platform to shine in after yeah. their college ball. Mm-hmm. And then, um, if they thrive, go. And um, you can, they can use it as an addition to other leagues outside the Philippines. So mm, yep. even, even the UAAP and NCAA, um, maybe uh, they are not being uh, seen or not being noticed in their motherland that they have to go elsewhere and use it as an addition for the national team in their mm. country oh, or other yeah. leagues outside. So. Oh. Actually, hindi lang si Ben Embala ang model example nila. If you know this guy that is named Rodrigo Ebondo, 
Yep. That Ayun, oo. very powerful guy that that played for the Central Escolar University. CEU. He got a, he got an offer from mm-hmm. a one Euro League team. Taas nun. Apparently, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. he, oh, nagkaroon siya ng parang development co- de- developmental contract don. Actually, haven't had an update kung ano nangyari kasi ang graduate na rin si Rod, si Rod Ebondo nun. But the last time we've heard of him, he's playing for the national team then. So yeah, come to think of... Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. So come to think of it, nag, nagiging ano rin eh, parang nakakatulong din tayo as a country. Yes. Precisely. FAC, yeah. FSAs yeah. na yun. Yeah, diba because, si Ebondo yeah. was the one that says, si, si, you, they won the D-League? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Diba? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Oh. So because champion. yeah, oh, looking champion. at looking at yeah, going back to Jay's point, the infrastructure of basketball in their countries is not as elaborate and as established as in the Philippines. Because mm-hmm. well, if if you're an African, your first sport is usually football, yep, or that's long, 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 sport maybe long distance long distance running like the Kenyan. Oh. <laughs> so basketball, they do have the facilities, but not as elaborate as ours. Correct. So, for someone like a foreign student athlete who wants to get noticed in a higher level or who wants ha- a bigger platform, well, they usually go to the Philippines because they get noticed. They play against well, tough competition, but well, physiologically, because of their body structure, they tend to dominate. So, ang ganda mm-hmm. tuloy ng pangalan nila. So, uh, so parang ang, yeah. ang, they, they always tend to perform the best. Because, uh, well, not belittling the Filipinos because their body structure allows them to dominate. Ange Kwame, 6'10". And imagine in his first year, in his first few games, he MVP was not Rookie really Shen, that ba? good. Yes, he was not really that good. He was a monster though. But, hmm. but uh, well... You see, because of his height. But he was... Uh, Tab Baldwin was able to develop him. And yep. sometimes it's just the body taking over in the games. Eh. Hmm. Oh, how can you shoot over someone with a long wingspan? Oh. And come to think of it, ah, majority of these uh, foreign student athletes, specifically, specifically the ones came from Africa, bago tumungtong ng Pilipinas yan, hindi pa marunong mag-basketball yan eh. Dito natuturuan yes, yan eh. Yes, yes. a point. Yes, good point. That's a very good point. Mm. Oh, Nagiging point. project sila when they come in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Ange Kwame knew fundamental basketball when he came here. He knew a little. He knew some. Mm. But he wouldn't be the Ange Kwame that he is if mm-hmm. he did not come into the system of the Blue Eagles. Mm-hmm. He would not be... Of course, a world-class correct. guy like Coach Tab yes. developing him, di ba? Correct. Yes. Coach correct. Tab, so, of course, can lay out that plan. My track correct. record. So if you're like, you know, a team in Europe or let's say in South America looking for a big guy, so once he graduates, then you have your eyes set on him because you have yep. a lot of game tape already. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, to to go back to your number one point, for me that 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 argument is 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 a bit weak. Ah, say, mm. like if you follow the US NCAA, the, all of the players, the for, field foreign players there, they, they go up to the NBA. Hindi naman, di ba? Muuwi din yun, Ibe. Muuwi din yun. Oh. Di ba? Oh. Muuwi dito. Oh. Naglalaro sila dito. Yep. Right? So, who are we? That's the US. Who are we to mm. hand them? Mm. Oh. Pero, since uh, I mentioned earlier and we've agreed on this one, uh, bago pa sila makarating ng Pilipinas, they they have zero, little to zero knowledge of basketball. The thing is, pagdating dito, kukunin na sa school. So, going to the second point na yung scholarship. scholarship yeah, spot, one slot diba? for scholars. One slot for those scholar, for the scholar, may bibigay sa FSA. So, sabihin natin yung FSA na yun, tuturuan pa lang mag-basketball. Pagdating dito, binigyan na ka ng scholarship, binigyan na ng uh, varsity player privileges, di ba, and all. Paano pag nag-flop? Paano kapag... Tumiklop, he became, ano? Like he's a dad. Shot. Like he didn't oh, do well. He's a dad. Oh, yeah. he, he bumped then out. He doesn't des- then he doesn't deserve. He doesn't yeah, deserve. I heard of... You just yeah. have to cut I heard of an scholarship. FSA. You just have yeah. to cut him. Um, yeah. I know that scholarships cannot just be cut, of course, given the right to education and everything. You're just cut from the team, but you can still keep your scholarship. But if I recall, there was a player, um, he was placed in a high school, 
not in a UAP or NCA high school, but mm-hmm. he was playing in one of the top high school leagues. But mm-hmm. um, I heard that this guy went went home already. Um, there was a college, there was a college that was trying to take care of him and everything. They were making him project. So you know, I think that's just an example that we can give. But, the, but I think the guy is the one who opted to go home himself. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yun yung magiging ano eh, yun yung magiging mahirap dun eh, na especially if uh, these uh, schools are the ones really going out of their way to get all these FSAs for the sake of their team na para may maen eh, may iba may maiba na eh. Tapos sasablay pala yung project sa kanila. The worst that could happen is pabayaan all in all itong player na to. Actually, I know there's a case that Ganun. they they saw this player, they brought him in, like the training pa lang, nag-tryout, wala pang offer ng scholarships and all, they brought, they brought him in, they brought him in, nag-tryout, nag-training, sumali sa mga pocket leagues. But in the end, hindi isinama. The initial investment was there, but hindi, again, those scholarships, those allowances, hindi na ibigay dun sa FSA na pabayaan dito. Di ba? Oh, ano yung mga ano yung magiging ano noon? Sitwasyon noon. Kasi for diba? me, I think in terms of giving the scholarship, again, it is within the boundaries of what your school's regulation is. Mm-hmm. Di ba? We cannot like if an FSA comes in, we cannot give them or the school cannot give them privileges. So, as a scholar, Correct me if I'm wrong, huh? if you're a scholar in a school, you have to have a certain grade point average. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right? And mm-hmm. then you have to excel in sports. Right? Mm-hmm. But if you if you lack in one of them, you get removed your scholarship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that correct, Claro? You could panang you could take yeah, or Lance, they might panang you could remove them off your scholarship for at least one cent. Terms and conditions. Yeah, they yes, always, yes. Ha- they in always have to satisfy the performance. Yeah. yeah, then follow the school's regulation. Mm. Diba? Pero, if, the, if the person really, if the, the FSA is really, the, you know, uh, deserving, deserving of that scholarship. Yeah, but at the end of the day, the, the standards vary from one school to another. And then being the end, able to pick up a then scholar, the league, scholar. The league should put that regulatory, that so, requirement. Uh, oh, so, yep. mang, lalab- ang lalabas dito, if yung FSA, sabihin natin na magpabaya or napabayaan, Sino yung may responsibilidad nun? Was it the school or the FSA itself? Kanino natin ibibigay yung burden of yung ano na yun, yung kasalanan? Sino yung dapat pasisi nun? In terms yung of nag-recruit? Oh. Oh, yung nag-recruit o yung mismong foreign student athlete? If he was recruited for the sport as naging done, hmm. the school should answer that. The school, the school should take responsibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. They invested. They shelled yeah, out. They, yeah, they shelled out. But uh, if the FSA was nagbulakbol, nagbisbehave lang. Uh, nagbisbehave, it's on mm. him. Yeah, it's a personal yeah. Um, yeah. error. It's personal mistake. Uh, if it's grades, well, it's also the FSA. Mm. Yeah, but, also. Yeah. Um, yep. Student because athlete, I, student, student comes yeah, first. first. Like, yeah. Student yeah. comes Carter's first. Uh, in the well, that is. you can you can always get um, legal help. Le- legal meaning mm. help within legal boundaries. It's not mm. that somebody tutor. has to develop. Uh, yeah, yeah, tutor, but not somebody that has to develop papers or assignments for you. You can always get help uh, if you are really. Kung kapuman tang recto, parang ganon. Yeah. Oh, if you have a book review, uh, if you have a book review about, uh, let's say, Precious Hearts Romance, you don't go to recto to buy a copy. You, you read the get, book. You can always get help if you're really serious yep. about the education. Yeah, uh, even these FSAs, they can always get help from people, and they are a, mm-hmm. a good stature to get help because. Um, the the people in the university know who they are and th- their importance to like the ecosystem of the school. Correct, yeah. Mm. Because in some ways, well, big money sports bring in the funds, eh? And yeah, if you so have if you have good players that can you know uh, get you over the hill and bring you to the playoffs, 
especially FSAs. Uh-huh. Then the school has to have um, has to have that facility to help them also in their studies. Mm. So, uh-huh. if, kung na lahat ng tulong pero talagang wala pa rin talaga nangyayari sa grade, hindi umakyat, it's the responsibility of the FSA or the yeah. So, I think we are in agreement na it is not enough of a reason to ban FSAs altogether. You know? No. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But we have to tweak somehow. Parang yes. kasi, for sure, the schools or sabi natin, sige, si Father Vic, nagiging conservative lang siguro yung approach niya to try mm-hmm. to remove the responsibility or the burden to the member schools. Eh. Diba? Mm-hmm. And in the future, then, try to remove the responsibilities to sa mismong FSA. For sure, ganun yung naiisip na. Para walang sisihan, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pero, mm-hmm. Anong, yun nga ang magiging tanong dito. Are those down are those downsides worth? Tanning? <laughs> oh, worth, ano? Or sabihin natin, eh, dahil dun sa mga downsides na yun, yung mga benefits ba na makukuha natin from the FSAs, dapat ba natin kalimutan yun dahil doon sa mga downsides na pinag-usapan natin? Bukang hindi, di ba? No, nope. I guess not. Pero going back to the scholarships again, mm. uh, just just briefly. Yep. Kasi meron tayong ano eh, um, parang, alam mo yun, <coughs> I, I call this the the Pinoy Big Brother mentality. Okay, why, why do I call this Pinoy Big Brother mentality? Not because you put yourself naked in front of 100 cameras, but um, <laughs> I mean, nobody has entered PBB without a sad story. Nobody has entered PBB without a sad story. Okay, and when it comes to the 12 scholarship or let's say 15, because you have 15 active, diba? In Last man on the yes, roster. Last man. Yeah. So, in between an FSA that you barely know of anything and a local player whom you knew went through the hardships, the failures, and all the dramas in life. Kung may ganun tayo mentality na he deserves the scholarship because of his life story. And that's where the PBB mentality comes in. I get some reasoning yep. with that number two. Siguro yun na yung, yun na yung pinaka-valid reason with that. The Pinoy Brig Brother. Mentality. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pero, Just a... Um, hey, Gabe, like you mentioned slide. it, Claro. A slight connection lang. There's a concern. Okay, you bring in an FSA. Okay. Parang how they see it, automatic. That FSA or whoever will take the scholarship spot of a homegrown player. So if that's the case, then I think as a whole, we can see, hey, we need we need improvement. Because whenever we bring, there's exactly. that notion. Whenever someone from another country comes in, wala na yung spot. So maybe, of course, we can learn things from them. Because it all starts in training from grassroots training. So that can allow everyone, all the stakeholders involved in whatever sport, maybe Philippine basketball, football, or whatever, to take a look at that. Mm-hmm. Maybe points that you can address. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's these certain points can be can be addressed. You know, after doing a study, maybe then you start to modify your training and see how will the future generations hold up. If you see then you see improvement improvements over the years. And that notion could disappear because I think, and maybe okay, again the US NCAA, um, you see all those all these foreigners coming in, but I don't really think they're a threat yeah. to yeah. you know Americans who learned the game in their home soil. Yeah. Yeah. Another one. This is a, a bizarre idea. Why can't they allot scholarships for FSA? Yeah, if it's just one, if it's just yeah, one scholarship, just one, why not? Yeah. Yes, why not? <laughs> that's the uh, easiest. Oh, uh, but, I mean, that's that's but the thing idea, is, some, but... some schools are stockpiling FSAs. Then limit. Then rather than ban it, limit limit your scholarships to FSA. Mm. So that's yeah. the danger that comes into it. There's uh-huh. there's yes, no uh, really written rule against stockpiling FSA. Again, it boils down to regulations of the... Yes. Oh, yeah. Pero, on, to counter that thought, Lance, pwede mo rin sabihin doon, those FSAs just voluntarily uh, admitted them, applied for the school at natanggap sila. Hindi namin ni-recruit yan. It's just okay. to happen that those guys wanted wanted to enroll in that certain school so bad. So, tinanggap namin. 
At yeah, that's the loopholes yeah. you're talking about, like yeah. last episode. But, <laughs> okay, quick question lang doon. If they just enroll, automatic ba may, may scholarship? Hindi, wala eh. Oh. No, they can no, play for no. their own. That's up to the school. Oh. Yeah, so they could play. So th- that, mm, it doesn't necessarily. Play, oh. So it negates number yeah. two. Yeah. If, the, yes, if I'm absolutely. just a walk-in, oh. it negates number two's, ano, if I'm a walk-in, uh, FSA, I, you know, mm. I I want to play, I, I study, I don't need a scholarship. Okay lang. Oh. But anyone can just, I know, like what Sir said, come in and say, oh, hey, look, I'm a walk-in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and, then, and, then, and, then make, and then the walk-in can make them realize that he enrolled for himself when in fact there's a sponsor. Ayun. Pero yun pala. Ayun. 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 Last yeah, episode, yeah. check it out. <laughs> yeah. There's maybe the PCSO can shoulder that tuition fee. Oh, di ba? Lotto, lotto oh. funds. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Di ba? Tama. Ito mo makikita so, yung yeah. ano eh. Yung perspective yes. ni Father Vic na very complicated. And these things might happen, di ba? Can yeah, so, happen. Can happen. So, in some ways, there is some credence to what Father Vic is mentioning about mm. uh, the, oh, the, no, the, the no. points. Actually, mm. we haven't gone to... 6 to 10 pa nga. Oh, Pero 6 to 10 oh. is basically about ano eh. Ayan, okay. Sige, let's go through it fast. Uh, fifth reason. Sixth reason is... Wala pa uh, tayo ng 3, 4, 5? Well, Kasama, it's, it's, very, it's, very touch, it's very hard to touch number 4 and number 5 for me. Eh. Because... Yes, we have no proof. We have no proof. We have no proof. Uh, <laughs> wala yan na. Yeah. Ayan na. Ayan na. Ayan na. <laughs> Isipan na po mga kaibigan. One last two many. Bang! <laughs> Ang tomato juice ni Jay, mga kaibigan. So from here, from this moment forward, uh, always uh, judge uh, Jay's statements in a different light already. So, yeah, he does not have a sponsor, okay? So anyone uh, interested in sponsoring Sir, sponsoring Sir Jay for his tomato juice, yeah, go is. ahead. And for the and for the beverages of the, the all of us. So yes. Yeah. Uh, Nakat na, 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 yeah. big lang ako, eh, di ba? You see? Here? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Going back. Well, three, going four, back. Five. Okay. So all right, let's go. Let's go. Number six. So. Going back, so number six is a uh, connection to four to five. So okay. practices number four and five um, essentially waters down the concept of being an amateur. So that's reason number six for Father Vic. Mm-hmm. Number seven is age avail- uh, eligibility. So you can skirt around the possibility that you can always say that these are 18-year-olds. No, but yeah, pero parang, but, parang, parang mga mini midget, di ba? Pero bigla. Yes. <laughs> you know, it but became diba, leagues back but in the day. Does it happen only to FSAs? No, like <laughs> maybe <laughs> you know, even in even in your bar, barrio or barangay leagues, right? No, but yeah, hmm, but does, yeah, some exactly. Some leagues, you play yeah, against some people, medyo mama na, may bigote, di ba? So, 16 I'm not naming any leagues. <laughs> <laughs> Pero nasa, nasa mosquitoes or mini midgets. Oo, oh, totoo yan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kaya yeah. ng edad height eh, no? Yeah, na experience ko yan, yung mosquito na, ano, 6'5", <laughs> tapos sabi nila 12 years old. <laughs> you're, Ako rin, you're Lawrence. Already has, you already has defined muscles. Looks like yeah. he's on steroids and he's, he's 12 years old. You're 12 years old. Yeah. It's not the dumb we, were, <laughs> we were in a 12 year old league, tos yung mga kalaban, may alos lap, may mga bigote na grabe. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, so that yep. happened over the FSAs? Yeah. No. The A, uh, no but, that's mm. reason number seven. So, yeah. uh, in line with reason number seven, if I may, you know, if they're saying that there's this thing of highest bidder because some schools have a higher budget than the other. Then you place a cap. You place rules. Because you see, you see it again in other countries, illegal recruiting. Why is it illegal? Because they're already going past the rules. So they can set that cap. But, you know, we have certain status quo. So there's some things that may need to I guess change. The, but I, I guess know the cap is a different done. matter. Because, mm. well, you, you play for school first. Okay? Mm. Not necessarily the money. Mm. But always they can always skirt around with advertising uh-huh. and sponsorship yeah. and all. Mm. But uh, you, it's hard to uh, envision collegiate sports with a salary cap because it really th- that that thought alone really kills the notion of you being a student athlete already. Yeah, or in maybe the moment, not, like, a, 
breaking amateur not rules. A salary cap. Yes. <laughs> not a salary cap, but you say the players' allowance can only be X amount. The moment yeah. it exceeds, okay, that's that's breaking Still the breaking rules. Breaking amateur rules. Still breaking, yeah. 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 Still but breaking again, amateur. there's a big difference between salary and allowance. Salary, of course, is for your daily expenses and everything. Allowance, of course, maybe it's just it's just your pocket money or your other things that you need. Pero hindi mare regulate ng ano yan, ng league. Ng yeah. league yan. It's easier said than done, of course, because oh. we have our systems here established already. Oh. Also. It's on school, yes. eh. Oh. oh. Taka, the school can declare one value, but they give a higher value under the table. That's a possibility. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So funny you mentioned the highest bidder thing because that's the, precisely the ninth reason of Father Vic. Nine, these imports will play to the highest bidder for the highest bidder and can take the schools hostage. You know, because mm-hmm. well, if I don't get enough money, kunwari, I, I won't play. I will not mm-hmm. play. Or I will play poorly unless mm. you give me what I need. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Points four and nine are pretty much connected. Yeah. Again, and then, within mm-hmm. the regulations of the league. It has to be within the regulations of the mm. league. And I am aware that happened. And I, I'm pretty aware that it's going to happen. Even with even with local players, it happens. Exactly. Like, oh. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, yeah. That's why I said it with a soft whisper. Oh. As you said, Sarmenta, you need to whisper to each other, right? You need whisper to make you surf like a ball. <laughs> oh, it's the last anyway, one. Okay, last. Um, All right. I find this uh, I find this uh, fascinating the reasoning. Okay, last point number 10. Presence of these imports have allegedly contributed to decreased interest in NCAA basketball. Decreased, huh? Decreased. You think so? Well, it's tough to say how how is that decreasing when okay, let's just say again back to the old rules. You have 15 players in your roster. You have one foreign student athlete. You have 14 Filipinos. And I'm sure a lot of them are homegrown or most are homegrown. So, of course, yeah. all the kids watching will see, oh, ito, idol ko to. So, we have so many idols to pick from and idols you can relate to because mm-hmm. they came from similar backgrounds as you, diba? So, I think there's still a good number of people to look up to and get you into the league. Like, kids will say, oh, I want to be like Kevin Alas and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially with the NCAA that um, we're in the players. Well, sorry for the lack of a better term. They look more Filipino as compared to those playing in the UAAP. <laughs> if I just look at the line, just look at the lineup of Letran, the, the last team that the the defending champions. You have Palanza, you have Franu. Na well, Franu can basically anybody in the street because he's uh, slim, he's not that tall, so he's a relatable player. So yeah, I don't I I I don't find any uh backbone to this reasoning of Father Vic na. It's not the dahil, tallest dahil, guy out dahil there. May yeah. isa kang, because you have one FSA. Like a lot of na. people will not pay attention anymore. When Yeah, don't mm. don't don't give that per, don't, don't give that burden to just one the FSA, di ba? I mean, yeah. Yeah. broadcasting is one. There's so and many. because marketing uh, at, at the end of it, yes, going back to there's marketing, there's sales, there's yeah. everything else that spices up the game. But at the end of it, just imagine the viewership that um, the Lasal, ay, Lasal story, the, the Letran, Letran, uh, Beda Letran final series. Beda Letran. Beda Letran, just imagine yep. the viewership it got. Just imagine Grabe the yun. inside the arenas. And you're telling me um, na the yung, yung FSAs Ang dahilan kung bakit meron kang decrease interest. So I find it, I find it um, unusual, this reason. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I was actually inside. I was there watching live San Pedro Letran. And you're heartbroken. I'm still heartbroken. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's but a crazy no, atmosphere in those games. Crazy was the atmosphere. Yes. It was yeah. yep. amazing. It even, was, even if you're just watching on TV, it's very frantic. Uh, and the game, ma, was right back and forth. Mm. Back and yep. forth. Oh, there was, those were close games. Yeah. Yes. Super mm. close it's, game. It's a big game. And I think he called them the Little Red Indians of San Beda. Yes. The, the, <laughs> the ones yes, they bring they in. So Whenever cute. it's a big game, they're going to bring in yeah, those the guys. Little, yeah, they were yep. so cute. Ba, well, you yes. know? Mm. Alumni. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. I don't think there's a decrease. I, I don't yeah. Me me too. I I really beg to disagree na nawawala yung entertainment value ng mga FSAs. Especially if those FSAs are committing traveling violations for four consecutive times or sila yung nagpipilitang magbaba ng bola from backcourt to frontcourt once they got the rebound then they try then they try to take it all the way tapos mawawala sa kanila yung bola pag dribble nila or kung halimbawang iwanan sila sa three-point area tapos they try to shoot a three-pointer na hindi naman nal- talaga nila mm-hmm. forte tapos they're gonna shoot continuous sunod-sunod na airball I mean What's ano yung hindi entertaining dun? <laughs> <In airball. laughs> What's not entertaining also with an FSA trying to speak the language? Oh, oh di ba? Diba? Oh. Oh. But you see that they want to be part of the culture. They appreciate mm-hmm. it, right? They appreciate They love it here. Pero, yeah. pero you see, have to consider yung history nito, di ba? It, it, it restarted with Sam Ekwe, di ba? Yes. The, 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 2000, the 2000 yeah, era. Yes. Yeah. And that, is where, and that is where NCAA got noisier, for lack of a better term, got noisier perhaps than UAAP. Pero konti lang, very, very small lang. Kasi for the longest right. time, pilat yung UAAP. UAAP yung masasabi natin the bar. Diba? Yes. NCAA got close or even got a notch higher, a little higher over UAAP because of that one FSA that yeah, is the same question. MVP, rookie, rookie MVP siya, di ba? Was si rookie MVP? Mm. It's a bit hard I'm, to remember. I'm not the really last sure. time I remember yes. a rookie and rookie MVP was a local. Si Gary, Gary Espinas. Espinas. Yes, yeah, Gary Espinas. Yeah. 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 He was something else when he was a rookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. yeah and going back to what Claude just me- has mentioned earlier, so the NCAA become more yeah, marketable. When Sam Ekwe came in, not not just for the viewers, but also for the schools, uh, the, uh, the players, because um, usually they target UAAP when you are an aspiring college player, collegiate player. Your dream is always the UAAP. But now, with the, the influx of Ekwe and the FSAs, NCAA becomes suddenly interesting. So now, you have more options to play. Mm-hmm. Parang, bakit, bakit ako mag... C66 UAAP when I can do as better in NCAA get noticed and probably get drafted also mm-hmm. in the in the PBA just look at CJ Perez just look oh. at the, the the all the NCAA stars mm-hmm. JV Bocon for example Ayun, JV, that shows oh, yeah. they learn how they, they, to they thrived in the NCAA and because the NCAA got more interesting now they had more people looking into their game and eventually they mm-hmm. got into the pro leagues. So yeah, not just more interesting, to mas din yung level of play we could yeah. say. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just imagine, okay, from from just the last final series, if we are if we will be able to pick the mind of Larry Muyang, imagine if we can ask him how much you have improved going up against Donald Tangwa. That's a very good question. Malaki. Yeah, exactly. Sobra. Oh, right there. Mm. Yeah. That guy blew up in grade, uh, ng game two. Yung mga, or was it yung shots niya? He was, very important shots si Muyang. Huh? Mm-hmm. And then we played. Oh, galing. Galing. Get him to raise your game because like, you're the only guy. You're, you're the only one who's capable of you know matching up with whoever the opposing team. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He, was, he actually and, played really well. Huh? Yes. Played Definitely. Really well. Yes. Yeah. Played really and well. even Father Vic gave Two examples of these players na sinasabi niya hindi nag-improve na nag-improve naman. Uh, or I don't know kung ano yung point niya kung nag-improve with, without the FSAs or kung nag-improve. Kasi talking about Raymond Almazan and Ian Sangalang, mm-hmm. they've batted against sino yung man nakal- nakalaban nila yun. They faced so Dan Daniels if I'm not Dan Daniel, yes. The oh, of- oh, si Dan Daniel, yeah. Dan Daniels. Dan Daniels. Adyogun also Ad- probably. Oh, Ola, Ola, Ola Adyogun? Ola, Adyogun. Oh. Those guys, they're yun yung mga kinalaban ni Ian Sangalang sa ni Raymond Almazan eh. Diba? So, for sure, those guys had so much contribution to the improvement of Ian and rock and roll once they stepped in sa PBA. Diba? Yeah, exactly. And especially Almazan Raymond. play for Gilas. Oh, especially for Raymond, he's playing yeah. for Gilas. So, na yeah. so there's, no, there's really no way to avoid facing foreigners kasi nag-national team din naman siya 
Puro foreigners ka laban niya, di ba? Yeah, we, mm-hmm. we have to learn how to play against pe- these guys, of course. They have to learn mm-hmm. how to play against imports in the first place. When, when, yes, diba? so of course, college is like a training ground. Maybe there's a limit. Again, maybe you're facing one. Well, today, maybe the old NCAA and UAP, you can face one foreign student athlete. So you face one. And then eventually in the pros, maybe you face a, a, you face a, a few more. And then pag national team, of course, ayan. All five players you're going up against in the court are all foreigners right now. So yeah, playing locally, yeah. of course, prepared you for it. Para pataas exactly. first you start out in a watered down version. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, for yeah, yeah. parang it gives you, you know, it gives you a sparring partner that makes you better. Parang yeah. ganun yung ano. Parang something you, like that. Yeah, yeah. You get you get a taste of next level competition in the college level with this FSA. Yes. Parang unti oh. unti. Yeah. But so you get a feel. Yeah, you get a feel already of not being scared with somebody who's taller because you know you can compete. Correct. Oh so yeah, yeah, that's the that's the mentality that uh, we are um, looking at here. Yeah, and then not all FSAs are tall, diba? Not all FSAs are in terms like you bulky or coming from. Yeah, Africa. some of them are just tall, but not necessarily well built. Eh, no? Yeah. Yes, some no, are like, lanky. Like the like lang- um yeah, yeah, best example I can think of recently is uh. The import of UP before Bright, si Utara, si Utara uh, matangkad pero payete, eh. lang ano siya, eh? langki, langki siya, yeah. oh. Mustafa mm. Arafat, UE, also. Did the current oh. one sang UST? What's his name? Salamat uh, Chabio. Oh, Chabio. 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 They but not also from Africa. The Lago brothers are FSAs, considered FSAs, de ba? They counted, yeah. They're counted Dwight, as Dwight Lago. Yeah, Dwight and Elmer. Because of the, te- because of the technicalities, yeah, because of the te- I think. Mm-hmm. Oh. Were they I considered correct? FSA? I know. I think they were. Yeah. Oh. And they were only allowed one FSA per. They can. O- they can only sub each other. Yeah, they, they could only sub together. each other out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's how it was back then. UAP, um, two FSAs. That pretty much. And then now it's just one, one on each roster. Yeah. Oh, so, actually, may yeah. play, may liga, may collegiate league na play ng ganun liga. If you remember about UCPL, actually they yeah. have two FSAs in that 15-man lineup and then they can only use one FSA at a time. Mm. So, pag merong papasok na FSA, ah, kilala na ako sino papalitan nun. Kahit hindi mo na itanong. Mm. Mm-hmm. Pero mag-anong regulate. Uh, so, you groom na your successor parang ganyan. Sige. Yeah. As we wind yes. down the, the conversation, so, um, we are now at the tail end of uh, discussing the merits or lack of merits of foreign student athletes. Could, could we say that uh, equal uh, exposure of the leagues to a wider audience can eventually open up the collegiate basketball or collegiate sports to more foreign student athletes so that we don't have to worry about banning them? Because what's happening now, you have tier one of collegiate basketball or collegiate sports. You have UAAP and NCAA. And then there's everybody else. Okay? The CEUs, the UCBLs. So what if Cesafi. So what if we give equal attention to all leagues? Like give them television or give them equal exposure. Would you think that would help us deal with the scare that we have that foreign student athletes is well, quote unquote, not good for local sports. Do you think that that could be a possibility? It's possible because with more exposure, you will find out that, of course, maybe someone coming into the Philippines will see that there's more than the UAP and CAA. So there are actually more slots for foreign student athletes. Yeah. Because if you're only looking at UAP and CAA, how many teams is that, right? 16, about, uh, 18. About 20 18. teams, maybe. Yeah, so of course, if you start with Sasafi and elsewhere, of course, you'll see there are other opportunities that you can also take. But we also have to consider we're not only looking at basketball. Lang, huh? There's yes. volleyball, there's football, there's track and field, yes. there's swim, swimming. There's obstacle swimming, course racing. There's obstacle course yeah. racing. <laughs> netball. Netball, kabadi, yep. chess. Yeah. You know, <laughs> rhythm, things. gymnastics. Uh. Yeah. Rhythm. yeah. <laughs> We, not only that, we also have to bring up the level of awareness for the other sports. Yes. Just not the league, not just leagues itself, but other sports. Diba? Yes. And in, uh, one thing in connection with that, um, we normally see homegrown Filipinos play in the collegiate leagues in football. Yes. Mm-hmm. But normally, 
that if you have a set of rules for the UAP, you have a set of rules for the NCA. It not only applies to basketball, but it also applies elsewhere. So that's another thing. So maybe if you're in the UAP, you only have you're only allowed to have one foreign student athlete. But when you take a look, you go outside, you see the Asian Football Confederation rules. You're allowed to field three world players and one Asian player. So that's four already. So that's another thing that they could look at also. But I think if I call, recall correctly, there's a cap that is placed. Because one issue was there were a bunch of teams, I think from China and the Middle East, and they were getting stars left and right from Europe. So of course, these guys were simply going to win on talent. So that's a cap that was placed also. So again, I think if we can take some things off there, we place certain caps here and there. You know, I think that can help keep the deserving foreign student athletes yeah. in the game, it, of course, yeah. because they've been be- beneficial. Raising play, pa lang, again, grooming people for the international level. If we're not really looking at the international level, then I think people can honestly look into finding foreign student athletes. But then again, a lot of us, whenever we see the Philippines play, we want the Philippines to succeed, whatever sport. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I think things have to be connected there. Then again, it's just not it's not just about one tournament, it's about the big picture. And that big picture again is the national team. As what the the 76ers would think, it's in the process. Yes. Uh-huh. To trust the process. Indeed. You got to trust, you gotta trust <laughs> the process. Uh, yep. you know what? your question uh, uh, sorry Jay and uh, Lance is lift up all the leagues, lift up all the other sports. Mm. Awareness for all all sports, all leagues. Yeah, it will okay. help. Yeah, it will help. If anything, yeah, kasi, the NCAA actually, uh, by this decision na ginawa nila to ban foreign student athletes, actually, masasabi natin holds no significance to the foreign student athletes. Eh. Kasi they had these options of the, these other leagues that somehow also get the exposure sa the national the TV exposure. Eh. Nakukuha na din nila eh, ng mga foreign student athletes na so, sige, okay lang. For the meantime, siguro, di mo na ako makapaglaro sa sabi natin sa Veda or sa San Sebastian or kung sa ano pang skwelan sa NCAA. They have a lot of other options which eventually will also give them siguro an opportunity if they were able to uh, say, excel to sa liga na yon. For example, classic example dito, Solomon Chabio. He was playing for UCBL. Dati. Mm-hmm. He was he excelled in that league. So ayon, eventually nakuha siya sa USD. he was recruited to USD. Yep. Diba? A lot of examples. So if anything, uh I'm not really in a position to speak for NCA, pero the NCA is not helping themselves if they ban these FSAs. Okay. However, they have they do have a point that there's a problem that exists between on there's a problem that exists in this influx of foreign student athletes. Mm. It's not just on the protection of the respective schools, pero sa protection din ng mga FSAs. Mm-hmm. And if anything, the NCAA should look on solving that problem not by banning FSAs. Because they're not... Di, di sila na, in, yung step na yun, hindi makakatulong. Because again, there are a lot of options for these FSAs. Eh. So... Mm-hmm. NCAA have to look, have to use a different approach on how to solve that problem that we mentioned. The masas na in some ways, ma protect din yung mga school nila, ma protect yung liga, and ma protect din yung mga foreign student athletes. Agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, it's not what? a perfect thing. There are definitely you know points you can improve here and there on the way things hmm. are done. Of course, that they can find it ter- internally, definitely. So yeah, let's close the conversation with that. Given um, you've mentioned improvements, claro. So if you were the deciding person, if you were in charge, how would you solve this issue? How would you solve this matter? So yeah, let's go around with each one. Mm. Let's start with well, birthday I, boy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what I think what they can do is to, of course, place those limitations here and there. Uh, there's that there's that concern again with people going with the highest bidder and things like that. So of course you can place that cap. And I don't know if I don't know if they can just place a, a limitation also 
on the number of uh, foreign student athletes that you can get. Pero mahirap, Sir Jay, that thing you mentioned, that thing where you go, oh, I'm a walk-in into the school. <laughs> because it's different from a pro team, of course. Because if you're a pro team, those are pretty much all the players you have. Unlike when you're in a school, you know, you have the entire population at your disposal. Anyone there in that school enrolled virtually. So I think it's pretty much throughout this podcast, uh, those limitations here and there, coming up with certain rules. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. You have the you have strict rules, follow it, you know. But it's easier well, said than done. Of course, it will be yeah, easier said than <laughs> easier done. Easier said than done. Yeah, you there's just a have certain to way things are skirt, already established yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. A loophole lage, but again, but for me, total total ban is not not a good way to do it. But again, just have the rules, follow rules, but have the regulations work as one. You know and. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir Jay. If anything, that's. The league that they belong to will not police, cannot police all these schools. So I think we have to start with the schools policing themselves. For sure, they have this masasabi nilang vision, mission sa bawat pader ng skwela nila. And for sure, those vision, mission statements are all positive. Talks about integrity, talks about honor, talks about all those great things that a decent human person should have, diba? And if any, if the leagues itself have these kind of problems uh, in their leagues, in their games, I think each one of those schools that employ or that admit these foreign student athletes should, should somehow police themselves. If I made a bad investment, if I made a bad decision on recruiting this guy, I have to live with it. Kung ano yung sinabi ko sa'yo, kung ano yung pinramis ko sa'yo, tatapusin ko. Gets? Kasi, if anything, may apply DJ yung karma eh. Kung sinunod, oh, applicable ng karma naman talaga doon. So, if you, kung halimbawa, iniwan mo yung studyante na yun sa ere, pinabayaan mo, but darating yun din ang bad karma sa'yo eh, di ba? Magkakaroon ka ng, uh, magkakaroon yung school na yun ng reputation na, ay, huwag ka dyan, nagpapabaya yung school na yun, di ba? So, the word, the word itself will come out eh. Pero eh, kung, kung ikaw naman yung skwela na sabihin natin, sige, nirecruit kita, we'll make an investment with you, we'll work hard on you. Eventually, tapos, uh, it turned out positive, it turned out to be good. And they got bless the team, di ba? Good for them. So, if anything really, it has to start with the schools itself. Di ba? Banning altogether is not really a solution, again, because... We talk about this improvement. Hindi natin pwede isakripisyo yung improvement ng mga local players natin because like what uh, Claro and Claudia and actually every one of us said here and we've agreed upon, these are local players are somehow dapat mamotivate sila eh. Dahil sa pagpasok ng mga FSCs na to eh. Dapat pumasok sa isip nila, ay kailangan natin galingan kasi malakas at matibay itong FSC nito. Kailangan galingan ko pa, di ba? So, it is up to the, the uh, homegrown players, to the local players, to react that way. But not everyone will react that way. Diba? So, hindi na problema ng FSA yun. Diba? So, labas na FSA yun. So, pero for those na yun yung thinking nila, improvement comes. Again, good for them. Diba? So, it's the schools. It will start with the school. Okay. Hmm. And on that note, we agree that... Um, Banning foreign student athletes will uh, take the competition aback because we don't have that glimpse of what is to come if we are to compete in international competitions already. At least with foreign student athletes, we'll not be scared with the tall, bulky, lanky guys or the, the more faster, more agile guys that we might be able to compete against because we already had a preview in our college competitions. So... But if, if you strip it with all uh, the alleged uh, blessings or the alleged perks or the alleged privileges, 
in one way, we are also helping foreign student athletes because the facilities that they have in their own respective countries might not be as good as what we have here in the Philippines. So we are giving them the platform to audition for their dreams, to reach their aspirations, and um, to play the sport that they love at a higher level. But then again, who the heck are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that ending, eh? Nice oh. and stop.